Hi there and thank you for watching. Well, you know on Ducoscopy TV we like to bring you something a little bit different. So welcome back to the fourth and final instalment of our Glitter, Glamour and Investment series with LK Bear. So far we've spoken about rubies, sapphires, emeralds and how to identify the stones. Today we'll be talking about the all-important thing, the value of the stones. LK, thank you very much for coming back in. Hi Monica. Now if we just remind ourselves if you can just tell us a little bit about the different characteristics of these precious stones which help to determine their value. Yes, so uh, first thing we talked about the four C's of the diamonds. So the four C also you look in the color stones as you look in the diamonds. So it's color, clarity, cut and carat weight. <laughs> but with colored stones you also have something emotional. You also have something which just you like it. For example, which one you do you prefer here? Oh, putting me on the spot. Um, uh, let me see. I This one in the middle. It speaks to me. I like okay. this one. <laughs> so, this one is a very brilliant Ceylon Sapphire, but it's a bit shallow mm -hmm. and it's a bit light to have the perfect value. But that's it. You can like something and so it's for you Personally, it's the value it has. Now, if we look at some of the, the market values here, we can see just how they're going through the roof <laughs> yes. as the years go on. So maybe you could talk us through. Yes, but these, for example, this is quite interesting because they're really small stones, 0 0.50 carat to 1 carat 23. This is really very tiny. Uh, I think this is a 2 carat stone already. Okay. So just to see it's cl uh, smaller than that, it's really very tiny stones. And that is what's usually used in the jewelry sector. And we can see that all stones used in the jewelry sector, ruby, sapphire, emeralds, are also going up. And also here we are talking about heated ones, for example, oiled ones. So you can see all stones are going up. So this is the good news. <laughs> yeah, so it certainly seems as though it would be a correct and a clever investment choice to get involved in stones. Of course it is. You can talk, you can say it's an alternative investment mm -hmm. and something what is very nice you can wear also. <laughs> so it's really not something new. I think it's the oldest investment in the world. It's, it is fantastic and if you think that so much changes over time but that is one thing which is, is has held true. Sorry. Exactly. If we go back a little bit, if we dream a little bit and we have some fantastic, fabulous, I don't know, exquisite stones to talk about here. Some famous ones. Now, could you talk us through, first of all, this beautiful yeah, ruby? So this is the most marvelous ruby I ever saw. I was in the Smithsonian. I don't want it to go out again and just stand staring on the stones. <laughs> and for example, this is a 23 carat. So I must really say, dealing with rubies every day, finding a stone 10 carat more is very rare. I just got the call for 20 carats I just could find one and this was not good enough and here you see it's the perfect color pigeon blood nearly no inclusions brilliance so it was just the best of the best dream yes one. to dream and some kind of these stones are still in some families who don't want to sell and in treasures and some in the museums we are very lucky for that so everybody can admire them. That's very true. Another one which is in the, the Smithsonian is the sapphire, which is also exquisite, isn't it? Yes, uh, it's, it's very, it's 423 carat, and this is exceptional in size. You can also see that the cut at this time, because an old stone, it's not read perfectly. You, you see a bit through, you, you call it in the trades, you call it, it has a window. Ah. But the size and the color is exceptional, and of course it's an unheated stone. Would you be able to wear that though? Would it be heavy? <laughs> it would be quite heavy, but I would wear it. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, they say there's no, no pain, no but pleasure. But perhaps not as a ring, as a pendant. <laughs> there is a way around it, of course. Exactly. And last but not least, we have another fantastic uh, emerald to look at. This is quite, quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it, this is a rough stone, so it's quite interesting because it's 1,330 carat stone, so really a big one. And of course, it has to be cut to be worn uh, to be worn later and but what is very nice you can really see 
how it is in the rough size and it's also a historical piece because also as I said in the past sometimes they kept historical pieces and nowadays uh, there are a lot of collectors also buying these historical stones or very often the stones are mounted and of course in jewelry through the centuries and you have very good possibilities in auction to find this kind of pieces and I think everywhere in the world we can have you can get to auctions or you can bid online mm -hmm. and there are more and more collectors all over the world who really take the chance also to have fantastic gemstone gem quality stones and historical pieces also it's beautiful to see it in its rough kind after the the, you know, the the shiny the polished one but that's still equally as impressive exactly okay now if we think about obviously we want to know that we've got the pure the the perfect quality of stone but who how are they governed who is in charge of ensuring the ethics are correct if we come back into reality here away from the dream world um, you know we want to make sure that we have what our certificate says it is so who decides all this are there associa associations which perhaps govern it so, uh, for example, with the diamonds, um, there was, a, of course, there was the very famous films and so on. And uh, since 2001 is the Kimberley process, which is very important. So now 99% of all diamonds are Kimberley process agreed. So also we write in all our invoices that we follow Kimberley process. In the colored stones, there is, um, for example, the Sipjo. It's a very famous blue book where the all all the regulations are it says uh, yeah for example that you have to call treated treated and if there are new um, treatments coming out how you call them how everything about the nomenclature um, then there is for example the Swiss Association uh, and so we I'm also part of it and part of the ethic uh, so we guarantee that our stones are ethical so that we know where they come from and there's also ICA International Colored Gemstone Association which is very important because it, it goes from the miners to the dealers there are different associations and I think nowadays nobody can permit not to, to follow it because you will really lose your um, reputation and uh, we guarantee as I said before also in all our invoices for example, heated, unheated, uh, everything, we have to write it down and all the jurors also should say where this come from, they should buy from recognized dealers so they can give this reputation on. Mm -hmm. And uh, luxury industry, we are selling luxury, so it's very important, this of course, point. If, certainly. Now, it's been a fantastic journey that we've came through with you, Elke, on this la on looking through the, the precious stones world. But just before we go, before we end our Glitter, Glamour and Investment uh, series, could you, do you have any last tips for us? Mm, for example, if you, go, if you go in a shop or if you buy something, look at stones at different lights. Uh, for example, yeah, um, a white light like the diamond light or this light will have a different look. For example, um, so sapphires and diamonds or emeralds, you should have a look at this light. So very often in the shops they have yellow light and yellow light shows completely different. It does actually. So if you take also a ruby, for example, it looks under, under the white light it looks uh, how to say not very brilliant and the color don't come out ruby needs yellow light and then you see the color mm -hmm. so every jewelry you buy with stones don't hesitate to go to different lights and to uh, the best is daylight also but of course it's a uh, stone can also look different in asia because the light is very bright mm -hmm. then it looks in the north because the light is less so light is very important so just take something go around and i also like the idea from indians they say they buy a ring they sleep three nights on it <laughs> and if they just have good dreams it's the ring and the stone which is for them Wow, <laughs> that's a really interesting. Of aspect. course, I don't know if all the tourists agree that you <laughs> buy a stone and you sleep on it, but uh, I think it's emotional also. So buy really, the value is something, but buy something you really like. 
and uh, there is also just the decoration, just the thing, I have something, no matter how small or how big it is, uh, buy what you can afford, what you like, mm -hmm. and then just be happy with it. And it's emotion, and of course people say also that uh, stones have good energies, different energies, and, the, and of course it's the most compact form of wealth which exists in the world. And it's forever true, I think. It's forever true yeah. and wearable. <laughs> exactly. No, you can have something which is fantastic, not only for your investment future, but also it makes you happy. Exactly. Well, Elke, it has been an absolute pleasure once again to have you in and discover the world of precious stones with you. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you for inviting me. Well, that's us come to the end of our latest Glitter, Glamour and Investment series. Please do click back to Ducoscopy TV and don't forget that Elke Bear is one of the sponsors of Miss Ducoscopy, so maybe you could win some of the goods. Goodbye for now.